Today and welcome, I'm Faintly Saintly and this is my quick and dirty guide to getting 5 points in every task in Taskmaster VR. <coughs> These tasks are in order and split into chapters so it should be easy to find the one you're looking for. If you find this useful and want to follow along with my other content, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a lot and keep you in the loop when new videos come out. Thank you and let's get on with it. A simple one to start, if you know what you're looking for. Pick up the spatulas to begin. You can only use these spatulas to pick up the ingredients for Alex's sandwich. Listen to his instructions closely. He'll indicate which plate he wants and will then start listing off his preferred ingredients. These ingredients can be found around the kitchen, mostly in the fridge. And don't forget the bread. Avoid the end pieces or Greg will not be impressed. Pay attention to the ingredients with these little heat lines. This indicates that he wants them cooked, which you can do by placing the frying pan on the stove and turning it on, then placing the food item inside. The colour of the food will slowly change to indicate its cooked status. Stack the ingredients on the plate in the correct order, then ring the bell. Easy as that. Oh, thank you. Mm, it's good. Thank you. Unlike the first task, this one might make you think a little bit. The ultimate goal here is to place a can of dog food in the food bowl. However, you start locked in a garage with nothing but the task, some scales, a stitch up watermelon and two locked containers. You find the first clue inside the watermelon. Careful how and where you smash this as you'll need all the pieces. The hint says the weight of the watermelon is the combination to the safe. So collect all the melon bits and place them on the scales for your code. This code opens the first safe which grants you access to an ultraviolet bulb. This can be placed onto the nearby lamp to reveal some hidden messages. A previously blank task next to the safe now has a secret message revealed, hinting that the remaining combination is written on the melon. Look at the pieces of melon and you'll see two numbers revealed under the black light. Spin the remaining combination lock to match it and it'll open, granting you access to the garage door remote and your freedom to leave the garage. Before you go, look at the map on the wall. A few points of interest are now marked. Make a note of these locations, as these will represent additional melons and the dog food bowl. When you leave, Alex will greet you and present you with another task, stating that the dog food is in the melon. You'll be tempted to start working through the bathtub full of melons, but try to show some restraint. Instead, you want to look for another stitched melon just like the one from the garage. Visit the points of interest highlighted on the map to discover the location of the food bowl and the remaining melons. Once you find the stitched melon, smash it open and drop the can it contained into the dog food bowl. Done. Ah, there's the dog food. Stop the clock. This is the first stage task, and one that can't be cheesed so easily. You'll need to practice your throwing and launch 10 watermelons at a moving platform. It doesn't seem to matter if you knock down most of the skittles, but one must remain standing. Try to time your throws so that the platform is at its closest to you at either end of its loop. And ideally, throw to the opposite side of where any remaining skittles are. You'll need to be on target with most of the melons to have any success, and you might need a bit of luck as well. Often the chunks of melon will fly right off the edge. However, with enough melon left on the platform, Greg will reward you with the full five points. I've seen a lot of melon smashing in my time on this show, and that was among the best of it. This task seems simple at first, but it's no yoke. While this can be completed a more traditional way, if we take the instructions on the task literally, there is a rather obvious solution to outsmart the taskmaster. We can't touch an item the egg is currently touching, but we can put that item in another item, which we can handle as we please. And so, it's simply a matter of putting a container inside another container, collecting an egg in the first container, then running around for a bit and tipping it into the pan. I found 300 meters was sufficient for five points, which was nothing more than a leisurely stroll around the garden. This is another simple task that is exactly what it says on the tin. You're in the dome with two sets of canvases. One side is blank, but the reverse has an image of a cake. Your task is to simply recreate the cakes on the blank sides of each canvas using nothing but sticky notes. Not too challenging and there's no real trick to it. Just try to colour match as best you can and use the best approximation of the cake that you can manage. The second stage task also involves melons and a handful of other fruits. Your job is to deliver fruit to the taskmaster using nothing but a remote controlled shopping trolley. You can drive the trolley close to your platform to make it easier to load up a piece of fruit. Then you can reposition the trolley and launch it with speed, using the ramps and other bouncy obstacles to get the fruit as close to the taskmaster as possible. There is a bit of randomness at play here, but I had the best results by using a heavy fruit like the pineapple, 
taking a long run up and going full speed into the ramps to launch the fruit forward. This is a two part task, which also has implications on the stage task of this episode, but none of this is immediately obvious. To start, you must deposit 10 small items into a piñata. Alex mentions that there is a secret rule you must follow, but what this is is not immediately clear. As it turns out, the rule is that any object you throw from one of the red mats surrounding the stage will not be counted, and so it must be avoided. Instead of standing off the mat, you can get close for an easy shot by using something such as a wooden pallet as a platform. What you deposit into the piñata also matters, for reasons that also aren't immediately clear. Basically, you want to include items that are good for accurate throwing. Think tennis balls, cricket balls, and bowling balls, like the ones available just inside the front door of the Taskmaster house. It's important to get 10 items into the piñata successfully without missing or breaking the secret rule. Before you finish, take special note of the shape and colour pattern of your piñata. This becomes important in part 2. Once your 10 items are deposited, you move to another part of the yard and given a stick. Before you are rows of piñatas of all different colours and patterns. Your task here is to destroy every piñata except for your own from the first part of the task, so I hope you remember what that looked like. Each piñata takes a couple of hits with the stick to destroy and you should have plenty of time to make your way through them all. For the full 5 points, you'll need 10 items deposited into the piñata in part 1 and your piñata must be the last one standing in part 2. You'll see your piñata again in the stage task. Alex greets you in the lab for this task, where you'll see a small picnic set up before a suspicious table covered in eggs. To start the task, you must hold the table up while Alex removes its one stabilizing leg. Then your task is to leave the room without touching or breaking any of the eggs on the table. There is a grabber claw hanging from the ceiling above the table, but the easiest way to complete this task is by enabling reach assist in the control options. This lets you reach for items on the picnic blanket from a distance and allows you to build a stabilizing tower to hold up the table. I found the basket and wine bottle did nicely. Once this is set up, you can let go of the table and leave the lab to complete the task and collect your five points. We're back to the stage for this one and you'll see your piñata from the earlier task hanging up nearby. Before you, you'll see one skittle on a plinth, which will rise if you, or more accurately, your VR hands, get close to it. Your task is to use one of the objects from the piñata to knock the skittle over from the longest distance. Now you'll see why it was important to collect items that are easy to throw in the first part of this episode. If you fail to fill your piñata in the earlier task, Alex will provide you with some useful items like a sausage or a spoon. Use the provided bat to smash the piñata and ensure that you don't lose your items off the edge of the stage. Then grab and start throwing. If you hug the wall next to your starting position, you shouldn't get close enough to raise the plinth. Speed does count here. You can hopefully knock the skittle over within just a couple of throws to get your five points. This one will really test your memory. You must complete a growing sequence of mini tasks, including things like ringing the doorbell three times, removing an item from the washing machine, or dancing on the stage. At first it's easy, but soon the list becomes a nightmare to remember, so I had to develop a little strategy to help me remember each task. Once I had a few mini tasks up on the board, I would use the provided sticky notes to mark each one at the start of every sequence. Then, when I answered the phone for my instructions, I would remove the sticky notes off the tasks I had to complete. This helped me to memorise the more difficult chains and allowed me to clear enough of them to get the full five points. All you need to remember is the specific of each task, how many times to crouch in the dome or what to do with the stuffed tiger. One other time-saving trick is to bring specific items, such as the dolls or the skull, back with you to the lab, so you can complete those tasks on the spot without running around to find them again. In my attempt, Alex mentioned I completed a chain of 16, which was sufficient to earn the 5 points. This bubbly task might seem daunting at first, but there is a cheesy path for an easy 5 points. Before you step onto the red circle and start the bubbles, look beside the shed and in the garage for some longer wooden pallets. Then, bring them back to the stage and construct a wall in front of the bubble fan. Grab the sword or another long implement to pop any bubbles that make their way through, and then start the task by stepping on the red circle. The majority of bubbles will simply hit the wall and pop, making this task a breeze. Just make sure you stay on the red circle for your pops to count. In this task, you are challenged to don a pair of boxing gloves and step into the ring. 
the Taskmaster will shout out specific times and your mission is to punch the Alex faced mannequins as if your fists are the hands of an analog clock. There's no real trick to this, except for knowing how to tell the time. And you do have three and a half minutes to get 20 correct answers, so you can take a moment to stop and think in between each hit. Get all 20 times correct for those sweet five points. Using the remote control, you must guide a robot through a series of obstacles to clink the martini glass stuck on its head with other glasses hanging up around the course. However, your martini glass is also filled with peas, which you need to avoid spilling. So some mix of care and speed is required here. Again, no real trick to this beyond getting your head around how to control the robot. Your driving ability is tested by the first martini glass, which requires you to carefully navigate a small maze. The second glass tests your timing, as it is protected by a couple of swinging mannequins. The third glass is the most tricky, hanging directly above a pair of seesawing ramps. Using items from the shed, you can secure these ramps and create a safe path for the robot to navigate. Finally, deliver the remaining peas to the Taskmaster statue to finish. Do this fast enough and without spilling all the peas and you get full points. Back in the lab, you're presented with shelves full of fragile china, an empty box and a tennis ball cannon. Your task is to get as many tennis balls into the box as possible. Breaking anything results in a score penalty and you are not allowed to touch the balls or the box. Another task which can be outsmarted just by reading into things literally. To be safe, you can start by gently moving aside the few breakable items directly in front of the box. Then, search the house for a nice big container. The wheelie bin in the yard or the basket at the front door are good candidates. Then, you can hold the container up in front of the cannon and shoot a handful of balls in at a time before emptying it out into the box. No items and more importantly, no rules are broken and every ball can easily make it into the box. Five points. This is another stage task, and the final task of the show. You are presented with a tray full of ducks evenly split into two colours, with hooks on their heads. Alex provides you with a symbol for each hand to use as a platform, and a hat with a fishing hook attachment. The task is to follow the instructions on the sign and place the correctly coloured ducks on the left and right hand symbols. It's as simple as that. In playing around with the task, I found it was possible to hook the ducks onto your VR hands and rearrange them, but this gave little to no real advantage. It's all just about the balance and coordination to manipulate the ducks onto the hook and then onto the symbols without dropping them. Get all the ducks onto the correct symbols within the time limit and you're done. And that is how you get 5 points in every task in Taskmaster VR. If you get stuck or you have any particular questions about any specific task, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. If this video helped you and you want to see more of my content, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and keeps you in the loop when new videos drop. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.